I'm uploading this video again. The first upload was censored by YouTube with their slick new speech halting technique called locked as private. This is where they can claim that users violated certain YouTube guidelines. In this case, they claim that I attach misleading tags in my description and tagline, which is a lie. And they keep their claims vague so they can squirm out of any legal pitfalls. So I'm re-uploading this with no tags and nothing in the description except the links to the original videos so you can see them for yourself. We'll see what kind of excuse they can come up with to take this one down. Apparently, the content in this kind of video, calling into question this white privileged black victimhood narrative, hit a very sensitive nerve. The people who run the show over at Google and the higher ups in the halls of government want us individuals who are white to feel ashamed. And they want you individuals who are black to feel victimized. This keeps us all at each other's throats and keeps us from uniting against our common foe. It's very important for them that we remain divided and ignorant. A divided and ignorant people are a weak people. And a weak, divided, and ignorant people are very easy to control. Here's the video in its entirety. Share it, mirror it, copy it, do whatever you have to do to make it as viral as the video that's out there right now, adding to our weakness, our ignorance, and our disunity. Emotion is good. But if you abandon reason and logic and allow yourself to be swayed by emotion, you'll be about as successful as a swarm of mosquitoes trying to attack a flock of penguins in Antarctica under the water. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with everybody you know. There's a hyper viral video on Facebook that's deceiving a lot of people out there with a barrage of white privileged black victimhood garbage. People keep sending me this video asking me to comment on it, so here goes. The original video is called Take Two Steps from Adam Donius' YouTube channel. It was uploaded on September 29th to his channel and as of the making of this video has about 8,700 views. And the comments are disabled, which is a really good way to shield this video from public criticism. Now, this same video was picked up and re-uploaded by a Facebook page called VT on October 30th. And as of the recording of this video, it's been up for only four days and has received over 35 million views. It has over 240,000 likes and has been shared over 730,000 times with more than 25,000 comments. That's pretty stellar for any video. So it obviously struck a nerve that a lot of people are responding positively to and are sharing on a massive scale. VT added subtitles to the video and included a headline which reads, if someone doesn't understand privilege, show them this video. The implication of course is that this video will inform people who watch it what privilege really is. Now, I've never heard of VT, but a cursory glance reveals that it has a global audience of over 19 million people. So not only are they not small time, they have a uniquely popular ability to influence a lot of people. Some might even call that popularity privilege. I don't know. And it's obvious from the views, likes, and shares that it's having a huge impact. I'll play snippets of the video so we can dissect it with logic and reason in a minute. But first, a quick summary. Apparently, this guy named Adam Donius got a group of young college-age kids together in a field, had them line up like they're going to race, held up a $100 Federal Reserve note, and before the race even began, had them take two steps forward if each of the eight statements he gave them applied to them, leaving other kids standing at the starting line if the statements did not apply to them. Obviously, the more steps you take toward the finish line before the race begins, the greater your chance of being the one to win the race and grab the Ben Franklin fiat note of debt. If you want to see the videos for yourself in their entirety, I'll leave the links in the description. From the outset, I want to say that if the creator of this video aspires to be a casino owner, he stands a good chance of being very successful at it because with this production, he couldn't have stacked the deck of personal bias any more in his favor. The only problem with this video is that from start to finish, it's filled with emotionally manipulative, one-sided, virtue signaling, false narrative promoting BS. So let's examine it. Here's the first statement. Take two steps forward if both of your parents are still married. There's no doubt that strong families hold a society together and strong, vibrant marriages hold families together. A healthy family unit is the building block of the very fabric of society. 
This cannot be overstated. But there are so many variables in a marriage and family dynamic that are unique to each family and to each individual within that family. For example, what if your mom and dad did nothing but fight all the time? What if they stayed married but were abusive to you as a child? What if those parents who stayed married lived a lifestyle that actually caused you to be less safe and less privileged than the guy that came from a broken single parent home? What if that mom and dad were never home because they worked all the time, you never saw them, and they left you to your own devices day in and day out? Or what if your parents ran a meth lab or did things that placed you in constant danger of not only being hurt, but also in danger of being placed in a state-sponsored foster home where you'd be more likely to be abused or even killed. The kids in the field that fit these scenarios would be seen by this myopic statement as privileged. This is a logical fallacy. Take two steps forward if you grew up with a father figure in the home. What if you had a father figure in the home who was molesting you or beat you up every other day in his drunken stupor? Doesn't matter, you had a father figure, take two steps forward. You are privileged. Take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. What area are these people in? Where did he pull this sampling of kids? I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, there wasn't this large percentage of any kids where I lived that had access to private education. I don't care what color you were. Take two steps forward if you had access to a free tutor growing up. Free tutor? What tutor is out there working for free? It really seems like he's reaching here and going out of his way to make stuff up just to put privilege points on the board. Take two steps forward if you've never had to worry about your cell phone being shut off. Ah, life's necessity. You just gotta have that cell phone. When I was growing up, they didn't even have cell phones. Besides, if the data is correct and these cell phones end up giving you brain cancer, who would be counted as the privileged one then? Take two steps forward if you never had to help mom or dad with the bills. Now, I get the spirit of this statement. The implication and assumption is, if the kid is helping with the bills, the parents are too poor. But what about the kids whose parents are teaching their grown child personal responsibilities and the realities of life? That things aren't free, and in order to live, you have to work and use the money that you earned to help out. And actually, think about it. This guy's further implying that if the kid had the steadfast character to help his mom and dad pay the bills, he's somehow disadvantaged. It could easily be argued that this determination to take the responsibility to help mom and dad put him at a greater advantage than those who were born with a silver spoon in their mouths who have no idea what personal responsibility and facing life's challenges is all about. Take two steps forward if it wasn't because of your athletic ability. You don't have to pay for college. What the hell kind of statement is that? With this statement, he went out of his way to make this unfair. What if it was because of your athletic ability that you didn't have to pay for college? Can't say that though, because that would blow the entire biased narrative he's trying to promote. Let me ask you, if one person was born with a mother and father and a cell phone, but no athletic ability, and another person was born with only a mother, no cell phone, and an amazing athletic ability that would eventually earn him scholarships and multi-million dollar contracts, which one was more privileged? His statement right here alone exposes this as total BS. And here's his last statement. Take two steps forward if you never wondered where your next meal was gonna come from. After the take two steps forward statements, he says this. I want you guys up here in the front just to turn around and look. Every statement I've made has nothing to do with anything any of you have done. Has nothing to do with decisions you've made. Everything I've said has nothing to do with what you've done. We all know these people up here have a better opportunity to win this hundred dollars. Now keep in mind what he's saying here, because the thread line that weaves its way through the entire narrative is that winning at life equals having the opportunity and being in a position to make money. Does that mean these people back here can't race? No. We would be foolish to not realize we've been given more opportunity. He keeps saying we. Who is we? We would be foolish not to realize that we've been given more opportunity. We who? Is he attempting to speak for people other than himself? We don't want to recognize that we've been given a head start. There's that we again. In case you haven't noticed by now, his mindset is that of a collectivist. 
where one man illegitimately takes on the mantle of and speaks for a whole group of people who didn't ask him to speak on their behalf. But the reality is we have. There's we again. There's no excuse. They still got to run their race. They got to run their race? They who? This guy has done a great job so far of segregating people, not uniting them. It's the whole us versus them trick. We versus they. You still got to run your race, but whoever wins this hundred dollars. There it is again, winning the race of life for this guy. The way he's conveying it in this video is about the opportunities people have or don't have to earn money in life, which he equates as winning or losing a race. I think it'd be extremely foolish of you not to utilize that and learn more about somebody else's story. So Adam's judgment of you is that if you don't use the money you've earned to learn something about someone else's story, you are foolish. Because the reality is, if this was a fair race and everybody was back on that line, I guarantee you some of these black dudes would smoke all of you. What in the hell did he just do? He made this whole thing about race and he did it in hypocrisy. Because if these black dudes, as he calls them, had the ability to smoke all of you, then by his own argumentation, that automatically makes the race unfair. But he calls such a race a fair race. In other words, he could have easily reversed things and said from the very beginning, take two steps forward if you have the ability to run a 4340, or take two steps forward if you could dunk a basketball at age 13. How about this one? Take two steps forward if you're deadly with a three-point shot. Or take two steps forward if you're likely to win a free scholarship to a top university because of your athletic ability instead of having to have your working class moms and dads work their asses off to send you to college. Why didn't he say, take two steps forward if you in any way benefited from government subsidies while all these privileged folks had mom and dads who footed the bill for your welfare. But of course, that would shatter the disingenuous narrative. So in his mind, and the way he states it in his video, if some of these black dudes, as he says, has an ability no one else had, this would be a fair race. Even though he just tried to make the case that these, well, let's just say it, white folks have opportunities that give unfair advantages over black folks. Can you even get more racist and biased? Besides, as a side note, one of the guys that never took two steps forward is white. Where's his white privilege? We probably can't talk about that. Interesting how he excluded the white guy as someone who might smoke the other white people in a race. And it's only because you have this big of a head start that you're possibly gonna win this race called life. What exactly does winning this race called life mean for Adam Donius? How is he defining winning? Because all I see at this point is a dude dangling a $100 bill in front of a group of teenagers that don't have the ability to question this guy's racist, divisive, victim card promoting, white shaming agenda and equating winning with making money. And if that's the case, criminals who make a lot of money are absolutely winning in the race called life, according to Adam. That is a picture of life, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a picture of life, ladies and gentlemen. This is the perspective of a collectivist racist who cares more about the color of people's skin than the content of their character. A guy who's more interested in promoting a false narrative than proclaiming the truth. A guy who proves by his video that he's more interested in shaming one group of people while he's busy making victims of others. Where are all the kids in wheelchairs? The blind kids, the kids without limbs, or the cancer victims who are struggling to live? Where are all the NBA basketball players who own five mansions, have a collection of 25 luxury vehicles, and an obscene amount of gold hanging around their necks? Where are his statistics that the top 20 earning athletes, since he wants to boil this down to making money, are mostly black and Hispanic? He's trying to make people who are privileged from his perspective feel bad and make the people who weren't as privileged, again from his skewed perspective, feel like they should have been more privileged. This just breeds a generation of people who are discontent and bitter about their current circumstances, rather than taking personal individual responsibility for their own lives and making the best of what they have right now. Then in the video, they race. After the race is won, he says, If you didn't learn anything from this activity, 
You're a fool. I definitely learned something from this activity. I learned that you can deceive a lot of people with absolute falsehoods as long as you season it with enough emotional appeal and mind-numbing manipulation. The video ends with the scripture verse from 1 John 3, 17 through 18, which says, If anyone has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And there's the coup de grace. The video starts talking about money. It's filled with a race toward riches. And he ends it talking about wealth using a scripture that talks about having this world's goods. So Adam's winning the race of life is most certainly about accumulating wealth. So much for content of character. To buy this video hook, line, and sinker, you have to turn your mind off let go of logic and reason, let emotion carry you away, and let someone else do your thinking for you. If these kids are disadvantaged to no fault of their own, what's the message? White kids should fall back and make life fair for everybody else? This is just more socialism and collectivism. It's just more victimhood training to teach kids not to take responsibility for their own lives and that nothing is ever their fault so they can claim victimhood and get free stuff. Because hey, the white kids are privileged. I leave you with an appropriate segment from The X Factor, which featured a young man named Emmanuel. He and his brother were born in the middle of a war zone in Iraq. Both of them had body parts blown off and were found by nuns as they sat in a shoebox. This woman right here, a single mother, brought them to Australia for surgery, fell in love with them, and eventually adopted them. I didn't see anyone like Emmanuel in Adam's white privilege video. Did you? I wonder why that is. In my estimation, I don't think this white shaming slash black victimization video could have been any more one-sided, racist, or shallow. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with others. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe and notification button and you'll be alerted when I upload new videos. Today's featured shirts are protecting and serving the crap out of you, taxation is legalized theft, and critical thinking in progress. Please stand by. Your $5 off promo code is in a link in the description for you for every shirt in the store. And don't forget to leave your thoughts for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next video.